Well, rats, you wouldn't believe it, but they're really good climbers. They're, they're fantastic at climbing trees. So all of our birds, except the very biggest of them, but all of our smaller birds are vulnerable to rats eating the nestlings, eggs, and they'll even eat the birds on the nests and trees. Now, rat numbers in lots of our forests are usually quite rare. There's not many of them, but when the things like beech trees, rimu trees, and kahikatea trees have heavy fruitings, which happens every three or four years, the rat numbers go through the roof and that's just simply because the rats eat the seed and it becomes many many more rats and it's during those sort of plagues of rats fueled by those um, heavy seeding events that most of the damage by rats is done so when there's lots of them they're climbing all their trees and they're killing the nestlings and eating the eggs and killing the adult birds on the nests so this happens once every three or four years in most of our forests and it has devastating impacts on quite a few species and of course the other thing that goes on is at the same time you get large numbers of rats, you get large numbers of mice responding in exactly the same way, and then you get large numbers of stoats which are preying upon those mice. So in those years when, when you get lots of seed and you get lots of mice and you get lots of rats and you get lots of stoats, our birds take an absolute hammering. And in the last 10-15 years we've had several of these episodes, and one in particular in 1999 and 2000 where we had two of these seeding events in a row, we lost four or five populations of mohua just through the high numbers of rats. We knew that we sometimes killed rats with 1080 poison, but we also knew that sometimes we didn't. And that, that came from operations when we were trying to kill possums and we monitored the rats at the same time. And we found we sometimes did and sometimes didn't. And in 2006 we ran a, a trial specifically to try and find out why it sometimes worked and sometimes didn't. And we compared an operation where we pre-fed, which is where you put out non-toxic baits first and you leave them out there for maybe a week or two weeks and the rats and mice and possums and everything get used to eating these baits which aren't poisonous and then after a couple of weeks we come and put the, the poison baits out and the animals have already got used to eating the stuff they hose straight into it and they're all killed and anyway we found that those the operation where we did the pre-feed killed all the rats and the operation where we didn't use the pre-feed killed about half of them so so it looked like pre-feed made the use of 1080 you know, fantastically effective for killing rats. And we've repeated this several times now, probably about 10 times, measured it in exactly the same way, and we've found that aerial 1080 kills essentially all of your rats. And you, get, and you can get long-term benefits from that too, because you, you knock your rats down to such low numbers, and much lower numbers than you can achieve with other techniques that the effect lasts longer. So you get six months or a year, or at least you might get six months or a year, depending on conditions, of benefit from doing a 1080 operation. So it's sort of, it's a, we've, we've been looking for ways to kill rats cost-effectively in big areas of country for ages, and we've been trying it with traps and baits, poison and bait stations, but they're prohibitively expensive. But now, being able to use 1080 in the air means that we can kill rats over large areas of the back country that are just not doable any other way.